Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're taking a look at two new items from Rhino Rescue, their first aid trauma kit and their individual bleeding control kit. Let's check it out. All right, folks, welcome back. So I've shown you a bunch of stuff from uh, Rhino Rescue, and I do believe in um, not only a first aid kit, but a really good bleeding control or trauma kit. Uh, the life you save might be your own. As corny as that sounds, it's very, very true. So what we got here today is a premium version of their popular IFAC kit. And it's a classic IFAC kit. It was created to, after sourcing some more community feedback on what might be possible that you could want in a IFAC type kit. Now, when I say IFAC, it's an individual first aid kit. For those of you that don't know, some might might not know. So what we're going to do here today is show you what's inside of this bigger kit, and we're going to go over this bleeding control kit. So first, I'm going to open this whole thing up and show you everything that's inside of it. All right, so first we're going to go over the right side, and I just want to let you guys know these bags are actually really well made. Um, I've had some first aid kits, even some military surplus ones, that the bags were just tearing apart, and the stitching was awful. These are actually pretty well made bags. So let's get into the kit first off. You're going to get two of these compressed gauze here. These come in handy for a lot of things, from minor little cuts and scrapes to serious wounds. Uh, your emergency bandages, essentially an Israeli bandage, exact same thing. Okay, you're going to triangular bandage, and as you can tell by that, this thing can be used for a ton of other things. You can make slings out of them. You can use them for um, head wounds, uh, eye wounds to hold the eye patch in place. There's a ton of things you can do with this. This was one of the things I stressed a lot in our, uh, our CERT class when we did our community emergency response team medical training, is having enough of these triangular bandages. Okay, next up, dry burn dressing. Very, very handy. Two chest seals. Now... You probably won't kill anybody using this on them, but I would suggest getting training on how to use it, okay? Um, just so it actually works. One of these is vented, one of these is not. So you have your choice. Uh, basically, what you do with them is the simplest way to do it is center this over the wound, that little section there, and uh, or put this over the wound. And what it will do is seal up the area so the person can get some breath again. Um, you're sealing up their, their open chest for that purpose so i would suggest going getting a little bit of training on them even if you just watch some videos and learn how to use them and it will give you instructions on the back here okay cool uh clean and dry wound remove protective liner from adhesive place it on patient's wound adhesive side down and press firmly to get an occlusive seal so that's what you're trying to do is seal up that whole area so they can breathe again okay same with this one same idea so they're very handy items to have if you know how to use them. And abdominal pads, these are handy. Uh, I can't tell you how many of these things I went through when I was in the hospital and they'd done surgery on me and they would keep covering me up and putting these on and, you know, over my over my wounds. Uh, let's see, elastic creek bandage, crepe bandage creek. <laughs> these are good. They're almost kind of like a, uh, a sticky kind of bandage. They're crepes, so they stick together and they really will go well over uh, things like this. So you can hold bandages in place like that pad. And of course, if that isn't sticky enough for you, you got tape right there. So that's that side over here. Let's get into this side and this little pouch on this side. So one of the things that shocked me was how much was in this little pouch here. Uh, we got sterile iPads. No, not iPads, iPads. <laughs> um, it was funny, one of the people that I had to rescue in our simulated training with CERT had an eye injury. And we had to um, cover up the eye with a shield and use the triangular bandage to wrap around it. And we used one of these eye shields. It will allow a little bit of air to get through in there, but it does cover it up nicely. And you can just use this to put it right over if the injury is too bad. Either way, works good. We have HR lubricating jelly. Uh, I believe that's for the uh, nasal pharyngeal airway. But not sure because I don't see one in here yet. It might be in here. Uh, burn care, burn gel. I would put a few more of these in here. That's a tiny little amount for somebody that might have a really bad burn. Now, CPR has generally gone to hands-only CPR for civilians, but they do have a CPR face shield. If you've done the breaths before and you know how to do it, good thing to have. Can't ever have enough of these safety pins. Uh, they're awesome for bandages and, you know, tying things up. Okay, gloves, of course. And 
I may put these somewhere a little bit easier to get. They were kind of at the bottom of this. I'm probably going to stick them up here because that's the first thing you want to do if somebody's bleeding heavily. You don't want to be touching that blood. You don't know if any bloodborne illnesses are in there or whatever. So definitely keep those up there. DZK antiseptic swabs, soap wipes, a bunch of alcohol pads, which are pretty much all you need, honestly, a tongue depressor, and wound plasters, essentially bandages. <laughs> Very handy stuff. So that's the little kit here. Let's get into this part here. All right, two things I didn't take out of the uh, side here um, are just, that's all there is in there, so no need to take them out. You got your Rhino Rescue tourniquet and a splint. This is very handy. You can use this for a lot of things. Um, it can help immobilize limbs that are damaged or broken. Definitely a handy thing to have. Even with a couple of sticks, you can even reinforce it if you find some branches. Um, if somebody's got a broken leg and you want to immobilize that, you put branches on either side, wrap that around, or you can just wrap that thing around. It is pretty sturdy and does uh, does a pretty good job. I played around with one of them in the other kits, the big rolled up one, and I was shocked at how it does immobilize the, uh, the limb. All right, next up, I did find a nasal airway in there. Okay, we got that. Emergency blanket. Very handy for people that might be going into shock. Keep them warm enough to stay alive. You have a little magic marker here, a little Sharpie. This is to write the time you apply the tourniquet on. When you apply a tourniquet, all right, let's say I've got really bad arterial bleeding somewhere in here, and I put the tourniquet up on my arm here. I want to write that time and date. So when they do get to a doctor or a first responder, they'll know, oh, this has been on too long. Let's get it off and try to do some work to fix things. Or, okay, we got some time. He just put it on 20 minutes ago, whatever. You never want to leave it on too long, so you always want to write the time. And there will be a section on the tourniquet where you can write the time right on it. The tourniquet does come with instructions. Again, um, I can't recommend enough Skinny Medic's channel um, on here. If you guys are familiar with Skinny Medic, he will give you the rundown on everything, okay, as far as how to use these products. Um, also, too, there's lots of training out there that is either low cost or free. Um, I do my cert training and that stuff I found to be very, very helpful. And lastly, of course, the Rhino Rescue Shears. These are actually really good. You know, it's funny. I got a bunch of these in my last um, order and I took one of them. And you guys might remember that rack that I had displayed here for you that I use in my storeroom to move stuff around. Um, I just have one of these just right through it. These things cut open plastic, uh, bu you know, bubble wrap stuff, um, plastic wrap, you know, anything, anything you got to cut with, they work very, very well and they won't damage the product, but that's the whole point of them. If I have to cut under my sleeve and I don't want to get, I don't want to poke myself, you know, I can poke this right in here and it doesn't hurt, but I can get under here and cut if I need to get under that piece of clothing. So that's that right there. Pretty full kit and a lot more added stuff. And if you notice, I did move one pair of gloves to up here because that's the first thing you want to put on if somebody's bleeding heavily. You don't want to get that blood on yourself. You know, bloodborne pathogens and illnesses are everywhere and you want to be safe. All right, let's move on next to the bleeding control kit. I'm going to open this up and show you what's inside. All right, so we've got this upgraded um, kit here. This is your bleeding control kit. Now you can open this. I'm going to use this kit in various parts of other kits that might be lacking some things, so I am going to open it. However, just for the average everyday Joe, um, if you already use the type of gear and you know how to use it, I just leave it sealed. But I am going to open this because I am going to use it on other first aid kits and kits that I've already built. So to open it, you're just going to tear it open like that. And you can reseal this. It does have a little, uh, if I can get it open, it does have a little uh, sealer on the top there. So let's take a look at what's inside here. Dump it all out. Actually, you know what? I would suggest opening it because all that stuff's sealed up. And if you have to get to it in a hurry, that's going to be a little bit tough. So let's cut it open, take a look, and see what's in here. I suggest there's going to be, a, I, I suspect there's going to be a lot of duplicates from the first aid kit. But this is just a little bit more affordable uh, solution if you don't want to spend uh, as much as that is. A little bit more affordable solution. Maybe to add some stuff to your kit that you don't already have. Um, ooh, it's, it's in there tight. All right, let's get this in here. There we go. Soluble hemostatic gauze. This will stop bleeding. And eventually it will dissolve, okay? But this is kind of like quick clot in a gauze. If you have a bad cut, you want to open it up. You want to put it over the cut, wherever the cut is on your person. And then wrap over with gauze over the top to secure it down there. This will eventually, you know, dissolve. But it does stop bleeding very, very well. Again, the compressed gauze. Really compressed because it was in here. 
I believe we have another compressed gauze in here. I'll get it out in a sec. Uh, again, another emergency blanket. This one happens to be green. Very handy for patients who are going into shock. Um, if you've got somebody on the side of the road that's been in an accident, you can tell. There are signs that you can tell that somebody's going into shock, so it's definitely worth looking after. Um, you can tell they're going into shock. Something like this can save their life. All right. Next up, the other compressed gauze. This is really packed in here. There we go. All right. And this is why I say you might want to open this ahead of time. Because imagine trying to get your EMT shears out of here when somebody's like bleeding out and you want to find where the wound is. So, yeah. Cut it all open. Take a look at it. You can always seal the kit back up. I didn't know everything was sealed up in here like that. Okay. Again, the emergency bandage, basically. A, a Israeli bandage. Okay. Let me get some of that stuff out of the way. And lastly, something you definitely want to have open, your tourniquet. Okay. Get that open without cutting the tourniquet itself. Now, I have played with these tourniquets. I know there's a lot of people out there that will tell you anything that's not a cat tourniquet probably won't work. I have messed around with these tourniquets. I put them on myself. I've tried to tie them down on chairs, on a piece of wood, tighten it up as much as I can. I have not had a failure in any of them so far. So I'm pretty pleased with them so far. Uh, this is, again, where you'll write your time. See, it says time on there. You'll write your time that you put the tourniquet on. There is a full set of instructions how to store it, how to do use it. Okay, very, very simple, organized instructions. So if you've got a first aid kit that doesn't have any kind of bleeding control stuff in it, this is an awesome way to augment it and upgrade it a little bit. If you have a first aid kit that maybe has some older supplies, like, you know, your tourniquet's 10 years old, you don't have any hemostatic gauze, another way to fill your kit with more stuff. Or if you just want to keep it in this bag, keep it in your vehicle somewhere where you can get to it quickly, definitely handy little item. So real quick, the price on the first aid trauma kit there is $109.99, okay? The Rhino Rescue Individual Bleeding Control Kit is $49.99, I will have links to both of them on Amazon. They will be in my store. So you definitely want to check them out. Rhino Rescue is also running a contest right now. So you want to check out their page as well. I will put that link down below where you could win a kit. So definitely some cool stuff coming out from them. Uh, again, you know, one of the cool things about this, doing this type of stuff on YouTube is I get a lot of extra stuff and I can give it out to people who might need it. Um, there are, amazingly enough, a good amount of preppers in this community out here being somewhat remote in the desert. And, um, you know, most people are pretty thankful when I'm able to donate some stuff to their cause and help them out a bit. So that's probably what it's going to end up with the uh, with this kit here because I have so much of this stuff. That I may keep um, just as an extra to have with me handy. Uh, but uh, definitely good stuff. Um, I like their gear. It's somewhat affordable. Um, if you look at some of the IFACs for, uh, that are on sale um, in what's available right now, you won't believe the prices on them. So for $109.99, that's not that bad so definitely check them out uh, i know first aid isn't the most sexy exciting thing about prepping you know everybody wants to get into the food and the guns and the this and the that and you know solar and but it's a very important part because all it takes is one bad cut one bad injury possible gunshot wound whatever and it can take you out of the game and end your prepping adventures rather quickly so definitely look into some training for first aid and check out their kits. Like I said, both links will be down below in our Amazon store. Don't forget to check out all the other stuff in our Amazon store as well. Um, even if there's nothing there you like, just click the link. Shop as you normally would. We love when you guys do that. It really helps us out. Our freeze-dried wholesaler link. Uh, I spoke with him this morning. He is expanding. They're ripping up part of their shop to expand. Uh, within a couple of weeks, they should be back to normal on inventory. But you guys did an amazing job. You bought a ton of stuff last month anyway. And I do have more videos coming up for him. I have a shipment coming in as well as a couple of things that I'm going to be trying out. Um, I, I want to focus on taking his food and making easy little one pot type camp meals. So definitely check that out too. That My link will save you 15% on your order. So if you're interested in getting some food over there, keep checking back. Go over there, check it out, get 15% off using my link. You don't have to do anything. There's no codes. Just click the link shop as you normally would. When you go to check out, you'll see the discount. Our My Patriot Supply link. Remember that to this month we have a special. That three-month kit comes with $200 worth of free survival gear. So if you have nothing, all right, if you're just watching my video for the first time going, whoa, man, the world's messed up. I better get prepped. Now you can. 
one fell swoop, boom, you're in there, you save $200 on the kit, plus you're getting $200 in free survival gear. Okay, that includes a stove, some filters, water filter, uh, lots of stuff in it. So definitely check it out. That's preparewithiridium.com, preparewithiridium.com. Lastly, our Thrive Life freeze-dried food store. Definitely check them out as well. Great, clean food. They are going to be marking their foods in the future for what's gluten-free and stuff like that. So definitely check them out and see what they got. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching. Stay safe and stay prepared.